Um, <laughs> welcome to. I almost, I almost said it by accident. Welcome to Psychological Insights. So today on the Evil and Eerie podcast, episode 17. Wow, we're almost at 20. We are back with Megan. And we are doing our first Zoom episode because these next couple weeks are going to be uh, crazy. We had to get a lot of shows done in early. I have family coming up. Megan is working like the bad bitch she is. (laughs) She is a boss woman. And (laughs) and, uh, Luca is en route to Eleuthera. So... Uh, me and Michelle are going to keep doing the uh, the in-person videos and we still like we meet up on Thursdays and do our live shows, but you're going to see a lot of uh, Zoom episodes. Um, but, you know, maybe if there maybe if there a chance arises where Megan and I are both free, you'll see us, you know, in a live action setting together. Um, so welcome back. And, you know, we are happy to be gathering on Zoom. I'm making it sound like a wedding. Uh, yeah, gather like we today. gather here today to mourn, uh, to mourn the green lady, <laughs> which is a hint about what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we are going to be talking about the Seventh Day Baptist or Adventist, they have two different titles, cemetery, which is in our home state of Connecticut in uh, Burlington. And there is a special significance about Burlington, but we will not tell you what that is. <laughs> Just because um, it might it might gain some stalkers, so I was like, "Yeah, that was just close where one of us lives." No, <laughs> we won't say who, but <laughs> <laughs> there is a cemetery in Connecticut. It's a really interesting cemetery. It's one of the more haunted ones, and we're going to talk about that today because there is some interesting. There's some really interesting history behind it. So there's there's a story too that's that's creepy, but. This is going to be like um, an episode where we really discuss um, 1700 and 1800 history that is very spooky that kind of carries into today. And I always, I always love that stuff. Um, but of course, we have some housekeeping before we jump in. Please, you know, if you're watching us live, our beautiful faces, you are on YouTube right now. So hit that subscribe button if you have not already. Like this video. And hit and that bell. Hit that bell and the whistle. Um, hit that bell so that you do not miss when a lovely episode of the Evil Neary podcast is uploaded. Yes. And we're also going to be uploading uh, bonus episodes. We've uploaded both parts of the episode, Me and Michelle Could Not Air, which are available on YouTube, which is just a series of like us deciding on where we're going to eat because that took an hour. Uh, and we recorded it because we were like, let's just let's just tape this. And then the other half of the hour, or no, sorry, the other half of the video, they're not hour-long videos, they're about 20 minutes each, is a blooper reel of us with an episode that we literally cannot air because, well, we, uh, we're reading fan-submitted stories and we might have been dragging them a little bit. <laughs> so... We might have bloopers up from that episode, and we felt bad, so we were like, we're not going to make this a regular episode, we're just going to air the bloopers. So both of those are up, and me and my cousin Gia actually also recorded uh, an episode of us just kind of shooting the shit, talking about our crazy family, a bunch of other funny stories, and I'm currently editing that right now. It's going to be up at some point soon. If it's not up already, it probably will be up already by the time this episode airs, because today is... Wednesday, if you're listening to this, we're not actually taping Oh, I was like, today's not Wednesday. We are taping this on Sunday, but it will air on Wednesday. And lastly, Michelle and I recorded a video of us playing party games. And they're a lot of fun. We played uh, Family Feud, uh, the card game. There are some interesting. And we also played Damn Right, Hell No, which is something that Megan and I... uh, Almost played last night. We read a couple of cards, but we'll have to play that again more at our next uh, community gathering. Uh, we made we recorded us playing those games. That's going to be a fun video, so that'll be up soon. Because we'd like to try to venture out and do other stuff aside from the evil and eerie um, stuff. So follow us on all of our social media: Facebook, 
uh, is Evil and Eerie Podcast. Twitter is at Evil Eerie Podcast. TikTok and Instagram are both at Evil and Eerie Podcast. And we have a website, www.evilandeeriepodcast.com. And we are on, uh, like I said, we're on YouTube, obviously. We're also on Apple Podcast and Podbean. And we're also, fun fact, I did not know this until Michelle's roommate came over and said, hey, do you guys know you were on Spotify? And I was like, nope. We're on Spotify. We are on Spotify. So if you want to listen to us on Spotify, you have that option as well. So before, you know, we jump into the, the today's topic, which is the Seventh-day Baptist Cemetery, just want to give a shout out to this nice book where I first read about it. It is the Connecticut Ghost Stories and Legends book. And I know it's going to look first right now. It was written by Thomas D. Agostino and Arlene Nicholson. I Shout found this. Them. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. And I don't, oh god. I went into the CVS one day in September of this past year and I saw it on display and I was like, dang, that looks pretty interesting. And I, I didn't buy it, but I was like, you know what? I need to come back and buy it. So the next day I went back and I bought it. And to this day, I have only read one story, but I'm going to read more because uh, the first one was very interesting. If you want to know about the, you know, the haunted, you know, sites in Connecticut, this is the book for you. I do not know if they make one for every state. It might just be a Connecticut one, uh, but I would be surprised if other states didn't have similar, you know, similar books. Especially uh, creepy ones. Yeah, yeah. So... I, uh, I would recommend checking, seeing if you, uh, seeing if your state has one, but if, you know, regardless, the Connecticut one is interesting. If you want to learn about our home state, uh, that is the, the book to get. And that's where we pulled this, uh, this first, today's episode from, was from that book. And so shout out to the CVS too for that. <laughs> and so I just want to remind everybody that we have had this idea. We actually had this idea originally last year to do a podcast where we went to haunted places in Connecticut and kind of recorded audio and some video and kind of like, you know, with the noises that we hear, report about the sights we see, the feelings that we have when we go there. And we want to start doing that on, you know, as kind of like a, a once in a while weekend treat kind of thing. So hopefully, you know, we'll get, we will eventually get to go to the cemetery in Burlington as well as uh, some other places. So be on the lookout for that. We've got some exciting stuff coming. Field trips. <laughs> and if you pay enough, you might be able to come with us. I am kidding about that. Oh, so, I, first I thought you were serious. When I looked uh, the this cemetery up, I looked up Haunted Cemetery. That's all I put in the beginning of the search. And it said Monroe, Connecticut. So for that to be one of the first searches, there must be a really haunted one in Monroe. Is Monroe near you? Oh, not, we're not going to say where near- you're from. Oh, it's, it's near, near you? It's near Marceline, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Right near Marceline. So it's kind of neat. We already have two field trips lined up then. Uh, so our friend Marceline, fun fact, uh, told us yesterday, just kind of on a related note, that Connecticut was uh, the most haunted state, which I, when I looked it up, I was told that Georgia was the most haunted state. Georgia? Mm-hmm. Oh, you get, I get my peaches out in Georgia and also my spooks. You're, yep. So I don't know. She, so I, I don't know, maybe Georgia, Connecticut, and then Luca thinks it's Pennsylvania. So we all have like a different idea of what the most haunted state is, but I guess Connecticut, Georgia, Pennsylvania um, are the ones to go to if, yeah, you know, if you, if you want to get haunted. Just also another quick shout out to the Paper Ghosts podcast season one. They did uh, missing persons cases in Connecticut in uh, Litchfield County, which is the most haunted part of the state. So shout out to them. Season two just came out. Uh, They do a case on a family in Ohio, I think, in this one. Um, But yes, shout out to, I forgot what his name is. I know my mother has a book that he wrote. No, it's not up there. M. William Phelps. Give him a listen. Paper Ghosts. Season two is out. He's phenomenal at what he does. Um, And so we had a little, we had a little scare last night, and I wanted to just kind of tell tell all you guys about it so megan luca and our other friend marceline came over for some cornhole yesterday and then we kind of transitioned into the bonfire where we lit a little um 
bug repellent candle and called it a fire. And so we, Marceline and I, who were sitting, like, I have this, like, little, like, I wouldn't even call it, like, it's this, like, set of, like, giant pine trees. And, like, it's grown to, like, a little, like, it's a little, like, it's almost like a little, like, area of forest. And I, I live in a cul-de-sac. Like, I, I do not live, and there is a forest, but, like, not, like, I'm in the middle of the cul-de-sac. So, like, not near me. Although my neighbors next to me do have a very little forest like and by forest I mean like a, a small area of like wooded area but there are like neighbors behind them and to the side of them so like neighbors all surrounding very closely too so there's a sorry there was a fly in my notebook um so me and Marceline kept hearing this like rustling like it almost sounded like a combination of like rustling and a person walking and like also like a a set of keys although I didn't hear the keys as clearly I just heard like footsteps and all that so the first couple of times we heard it we were kind of like freaked out like what is that we were on edge <laughs> and then we like would hear it again and I'd like jump a little bit and Marceline would be like I heard it again Marceline heard it like 10 times I only heard it like three um it was right and behind so, you at one point what was that it was right behind you it what okay then yeah no when it sounded like it was right behind me I ran I mean I mean Marceline got up and ran you and Luca didn't hear it and then we like we had left all of our games and everything like my keys my phone we had left it all behind so we had oh, to keep I went, making, yeah like, I went I went back to get the bug repellent little candle and then I heard it <laughs> and I I ran with that torch oh wait I have to tell them about like about what you what you did when you were going to go on that. So we had to keep going on these little field trips and keep retrieving objects because you can only carry so much at once. And so Luca went first. Luca went up there and she just like sprints back. <laughs> like she was like, ah! And she sprinted back because she was like, I heard it, I heard it. And then <laughs> you turn to me and you go, it's my turn. <laughs> and I could not stop laughing. <laughs> and then you went and you were like, oh my God, I hear it. But then you like you grabbed it and we came. And then we left the little bug cap behind, and so I had to go grab that. And it was just it was we don't know what it was. Um, we think it was a rabbit because there I've seen rabbits around that area a lot. Um, it could have also been one of the neighborhood cats. I don't think so though, because cats are usually a lot more stealthy. You can't really hear them. No. Um, at one point we were like, "Is it a person?" And honestly, I was praying it was a person. <laughs> because I was like, better a person that we can fight off than an animal <laughs> that will attack us. I was like, as long as it's not a snake, I'm good. I guess so. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Marceline was like, oh, maybe it's a coyote or a fox. <laughs> I was like, maybe it's a bear, Marceline. <laughs> but that was that was our scare of the night. That was, that we were like, oh my God. So then we just sat in my pool, my caged pool area. <laughs> caged pool? Today... Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about, like I said, the Seventh Day uh, Baptist Cemetery, which is in Burlington, Connecticut. And so, for those of you who are just hearing about this, which is probably going to be most of you, it is haunted by the Green Lady. So, the Green Lady, who uh, wears an emerald sheen around her body, which is an emerald glow. She doesn't wear it, it just surrounds her like an aura. Um, it is the ghost of Elizabeth Palmiter, and she died at the age of 30 on April 12th, 1800. So, she's been gone for a while. Oh, she died when she was 30. She died when she was 30. So, she was born in 1770. Yikes. Uh, she, so there are a couple of conspiracies as to how she died because she drowned in a swamp which we found out from luca yesterday because luca knew this story i mean she is the green lady that's why she knows her barbara is the green lady actually <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so there are a couple of a couple of conflicting theories as to how miss palmiter died mrs palmiter i should say so she like i said she drowned in a swamp next to the graveyard her husband, Benjamin, was, it, there, there are conflicting reports as to where Benjamin was. He, wa he could have been there, as to one of the reports. He was either there and could not help her, 
or didn't help her. So you could have let her die. Uh, or there was also a blizzard going on at that time. New England, we love our blizzards. <laughs> we love our Dairy Queen blizzards. Hashtag sponsored by Dairy Queen. There's a Dairy Queen coming to my hometown and I could not be more excited. In walking distance, too. It's, it's really dangerous, actually. It's going to oh be bad. Oh, my God. Late it's going to be bad. Blizzard runs. Mm-hmm. It's, yep. He, there was a blizzard, and he, according to the other report, was waiting out the blizzard from wherever his destination was. So he was not coming home, and she got nervous, and she tried to venture out and find him like the loony she was. And she got caught in the blizzard, and that's how she drowned in the swamp. Uh... Also, though, I, I think Luca, I'm pretty sure yesterday when she was kind of going over this, told us like something like he was at war. Didn't she like say something like that? Yeah, that he was on a trip and he didn't return when he said he was. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So that would be, I thought she said like he was like in the war or something and something like that. Oh. She was found in the, in a green dress, which is why she's called a green lady. And isn't that the name of like a drink, like a, an alcoholic beverage, the green leaf? I can see that. I can see that. Some people also say he murdered her and dumped her body in the swamp. Oh yeah, and then used drowning as a as a cover up. Yeah, and it's I mean, and these like these days it's relatively <laughs> these days it's relatively easy to catch a murderer. I feel like or like solve a murder. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> we like to dance sometimes in the podcast. Um, but in the 1800s, like it, it was, it was like, it was pretty easy to get away with murder. Um. <laughs> yeah, in yes. the 1800s, definitely. You didn't have what's his name, uh, Henry Lee or whatever his name is, that forensicologist. Um, please take that out. I'm going to sound so silly. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, the technology for finding finding out murders and the scientific stuff, that was not really uh, as advanced in the 1800s, of course. Yeah, no. So it would have it would have been like it would have been relatively easy. And I mean, they didn't, you know, I'm sure they had their methods of questioning, but there were just there are so many more motives these days. Yeah, he could have said he drowned her and they would have been like, all right. Or no, no, he could have said, <laughs> no, he could have said she drowned and they would have been like, oh, okay. I'll believe you. <laughs> Even, and I mean, the other thing too is like, did they not have like, they must have not really been in like done stuff with autopsies at that point. Yeah, they should have. Like autopsies might have not been like, a uh, the green lady wanders not only the cemetery, but she wanders the roads near the cemetery so you're not even like you might see her like if you're like near the cemetery you don't have to be in there um to spot her witnesses say and this is this is really creepy that she has like a happy expression on her face like she's like walking around you know <laughs> smiling which is like you know pretty optimistic for somebody who died brutally <laughs> yeah and it must be noted that for anybody who lives in Connecticut and wants to go here, you can't unless you unless you uh, you contact some police or some officials or something. Yeah, else, you'll get arrested. Like that, and that's what I was, that's what I was trying to tell Luca yesterday, and she was like, "No, anyone can go there." I was like, "That's not what the book said, Luca." <laughs> and in the book, it it says, and I wrote this down in the notes. They don't even disclose a location. Publicly. Oh, they don't. No, if you try looking it up on Google, unless I'm unless you know the book is outdated a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's like a, a like a recent book. You see when it was written. Um, that you like you they literally like oh 2011. Oh. I didn't realize it was a decade old. Oh, maybe they dropped the address. Don't disclose the address on Google. Um, you have to like ask officials like where it is. And they might not yeah. like even tell you. So like that's that to me is like wow that that really must be like creepy if they're not even like publicly like listing the address anywhere. Not that I don't think it would be hard to find. Like you know I mean I, I don't think it's hard to find anything these days. Um, look it up on the con voter website. <laughs> <laughs> it, might be, it might be there. It might have a, it might be a registered voter. 
Um, the green lady's a registered voter. Maybe she's in the green party. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> You know what? She might be because they do have people listed on the con voter website. Fun fact that have been dead for years. Like, I, I don't think they remove everybody that's dead. Off of that list. It is. Um, so they say she's beautiful and that she has a, either a green mist or a green slime that follows her. Yeah, slime like the Nickelodeon. Oh, wait, that was orange. Um, <laughs> was it or was it green? Oh, it's green. It's green. Oh, wait. It, it was? Oh, wait. You froze. It was green. It was green. Okay. Huh. The logo was orange. Green, that, yeah. was, that was what was orange. Um, so, her, there's a house next to the burial ground. It's this house that I they think used to be hers. It's right next to the, the graveyard. And it is also very haunted. And I guess there is a portrait in the house of Elizabeth Palmiter. And that the portrait watches over the house. And you can see the portrait from the road. You can see it, like, pretty far away. Really? So we'll have to, like, go and see if we can find it. I don't know if there are people living in the house. I would assume there are. And if so, why didn't they take the portrait down? Maybe if, maybe, I don't know, maybe people have tried and it, like, comes back, like the Ouija boards. Like you try to take it down and it just reappears. Yeah. <laughs> or like the the following eyes, like oh my god, paintings. I paintings are creepy. Paintings are creepy of people. Like scream. That one's the creepiest. Yeah. Like that one. Ooh, always gotten the heebie jeebies with that one. Most of the time, people will see her at midnight. So if you're gonna go and you don't want to see the green lady, go during the day or go like just don't go around midnight. Um, again, sound familiar? Don't drive at midnight. <laughs> so don't drive at midnight. You'll see her Wait, and you'll see the drunk midnight. drivers. You can't drive between 1 and 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you're in Burlington, Marceline would tell you not to drive at all at night. <laughs> just like don't go at anywhere. Just, just lock your doors and stay inside. <laughs> um, so professional ghost hunters have found an anomaly near her grave. Uh, missed. And there's a picture in the in the in the reading. In the reading. In the book. I mean, in the reading. For a second. You thought would you say you thought I was I mean, for, a school for a second? <laughs> in the reading. In the book, there's actually a picture and I'll have Michelle post it on um on the social media. You can't really see it great, but like there's mist rising up. Like so that's what people like they see like I mist, see like fog and like mist like, rising up. I'll have to send you a better picture of it. Uh, they found an anomaly near her grave. And so the origins of this cemetery is that it was it came together in the 1700s by Baptists that came from Rhode Island. They just all came to Burlington, Connecticut. Originally, it was called West Britain. So at the time, it was West Britain, Connecticut. Now it's Burlington. Oh, really? Um, they were descendants of the Roger Williams congregation. And they they all came, you know, <laughs> the, the mass, like, exodus from Rhode Island into Burlington. And they established this cemetery. And it was actually, it's actually a burial ground, not a cemetery. Because they would just kind of, like, dump the bodies it wasn't like, you know, an official, like they recognized. Um, and there were gravestones that I guess would get stolen. Yeah. Like multiple times. Uh, like they would go missing and then they'd put a new one in, they'd go missing again. So it's a burial ground. Um, I think some people do have marked graves. There are only, you want to know how many graves are in this burial ground? Just take a, take a stab, take a guess. At that cemetery? Yeah. How many are there? Yeah. Are there a hundred? No, not a hundred. Two hundred? Thirty-five. <laughs> there are only thirty-five. Thirty-five? That is such a... I was like, when I saw that, I had to do like a triple take. I was like, thirty-five? Like, that is a 
very small number. And it just begs the question of, did people not want to get buried there because it was haunted? Yeah, or because, yeah, because of all the talk surrounding it. Yeah, a lot of, it was the talk of the town. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so the oldest person, the oldest marked grave was in 1792. So that's when the first known burial happened. Sorry, my wall just made a noise. Oh, oh you're frozen again. Oh, there you are. My wall just made a noise. I don't know if you heard that. I <laughs> Creepy noise. So um, earliest marked grave was in 1792. Pastor Davis. <laughs> he was 68 years old in the 1700s. That's pretty rare. That's pretty old yeah. for the 1700s. He lived to be 68. That'd be like 90 something now. It would. It would. Like today, if somebody died at 68, we'd be like, that's kind of young. Yeah. But like back then... Um, and they were like, so they also called them the Sabbatarians and the Sabbatarians were plagued with mysterious deaths around that time, which is why maybe like another reason the cemetery could be haunted or why they like, didn't like bury them there that much. Um, someone fell from a ladder and died. Uh, a woman somehow hung herself while repairing a lamp. So not intentionally hung herself, but like oh, got like hung. Uh, a recently dug well collapsed on a man. And a tree mysteriously fell on someone too. So a lot of like- a lot of <laughs> you know, Maybe George Washington was chopping it down. <laughs> um, so yeah. the 17th, the Seventh Day Baptists were like, "All right, well, screw that. We're not staying in this haunted little town anymore." And in 1820, they packed their bags and moved to uh, New York. Uh, and that is where Marceline will be shooting her film. No, <laughs> <laughs> and so, yes, they they are not in Burlington anymore. They were like, "We got to get out of here." Smart. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, the last known burial was in 1881. And it was Charlotte Spencer. And so I'm guessing she might have been like one of the descendants that stuck around. Poor thing. And, <laughs> and she was like, I want to be buried with my ancestors or whatever. So they threw her in there in 1881 as well. So I so I don't know. What are your what are your thoughts on the this cemetery? The cemetery? Well, I was uh, looking yesterday and today a little bit at that uh it's called damnedconnecticut.com <laughs> and people commented on this little on this little tale this little folk lore and some people are like oh i've been there before there were restrictions on going there and they didn't see anything and some people were trying to be realistic and say oh it's not actually there's no actual evidence that elizabeth was even murdered or it was told by some camp counselor and it became the talk of the town and so i i would i would like to believe it when i see it is what i'll say so there are people that like think it's like made up entirely yeah they think it's made up entirely dang um yeah i damnedconnecticut.com um, <laughs> <laughs> everybody give that website a check out um, I mean yeah I mean I'm always like I don't know I feel like you and I are, are kind of on the same page I feel like we both are like believers but we're skeptical at the same time yeah I'm a, little, I'm a little skeptical after reading that comment now yeah because um, I, do, I mean you're saying some people actually saw a little shadow and weird things were happening and I mean, yeah. if, if officials had to get involved, then I don't know. I, mean, I think because I was drawing a lot of uh, people visiting and they had to place some kind of restriction on it. So yeah. I'm kind of Oh, yeah, without oh. a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. I don't think it's restricted because it's haunted. I think people just think it is and just go there. Because there are so many people that are like... I think people were destroying... I think people were destroying the graves. They mm -hmm. were trying to... Yeah. yeah. And like stealing them, yeah, stuff like that. I mean, I, we could also like, I, I think I'd want to look up and see if like Elizabeth Palmer was like a real per. I mean, 
when we take the ancestor test, maybe she'll be my like great grandmother, 87, you know, layers ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I feel like I, I definitely want to see the house. I want to see the house. I want to see if we can actually like see the portrait from the house and yeah. hopefully like it'll, we'll be able to find where it is. But if not, you know, Luca knows where it is. <laughs> I'm surprised. You know, Wait, has she been there? I don't think she's been there. Oh, I'm surprised. But I don't think she'd be opposed to go. I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, we just got to make sure Marceline doesn't like tell her anything before. Like okay. any like fun facts about cemeteries at night. Because then she won't want to go. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a little skeptical too about like, the, like the green mint, like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like that's being extravagant. Seeing it like a green mist. Yeah. We get in real life. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, we get <laughs> I was like, I, for like a second I didn't hear and I was like, oh, wicked. Yeah. <laughs> No one mourns the wicked. No one mourns the green lady. No. They really don't. They they throw stuff at the graves and take the graves and. I mean, she got killed. She's happy. Folks. She got killed, but she's happy about it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. I would you, after all this, would you still want to see it? Like, yeah. would you? Yeah. So would I. <laughs> yeah, if it, were op if it were open for us, uh, yeah, I'd see it. Do you think we would see anything? Um, probably not. You don't think so? Yeah, I don't think so either. I feel like it's always, like, the most, like, the most, like, in I don't want to say intimidated. Well, I guess I intimidated the most scared of the, the haunts that see it. Like, they're always the ones that ghosts appear to for some reason. It's not the ones that want to see them like me. Yeah. Or I guess maybe you got to go without the intention of trying to see it. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. It's good. We'll be like, we're just, we're go. you know, we're going to go visit our great-grandma, Charlotte Spencer. <laughs> and our great-grandfather, Pastor Davis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our, you know, our ancestral, you know, Luca. I'm sure she's buried there, too. Ancestral. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. So, yeah, that's the uh, the Seventh-day Baptist Cemetery. Um, if you are in the uh, Connecticut area, I urge you to go there and let us know if you see it or if you have been there uh, and you've seen it. Let us know. We also want other stories, too. So if there have been, like, any apparitions that you have seen or you know somebody that's seen, you know, send them to us. We would love to read them and interact with you. Um, <laughs> creepy in Connecticut. Tell us your story. That, like, skipped while you were saying it. Like, your hand was going, like... Oh, I said... <laughs> I said, if you've been to anywhere... If you've been anywhere creepy in Connecticut and you have a story, share it with us. Because we, like I said, we want to go visit all these places. We want to go visit them all. So let us know, because we will, we will take a, a field trip. Making a haunted bucket list. Yes. Um, so, Friday, because this, uh, this is Wednesday. Friday! <laughs> yeah, we start playing the Rebecca Black soundtrack, um, <laughs> which is actually 10 years old now. I don't know if you, you oh, yeah, that 10 years old. Oh my god, my teacher, my homeroom teacher in high school played that song every Friday. <laughs> oh god. That was like poor Rebecca Black. She got so much hate after that came out. Yeah, she's making more music. She's like back. Like she wow. actually makes like decently sounding music now. Oh wow! Ten years later, she is back. Yeah. She's she's climbing back, making a comeback. Good for her. Um. So yeah, I can't believe that's ten years old now. Holy crap! Uh, two thousand eleven, it came out. Yeah. Um. So. We are going to be doing the Circleville Letters episode next with Luca, uh, which we will be recording tomorrow on Zoom after I get home from the town hall camp. <laughs> um, and we are going to be, it's a case in Ohio, actually, so not where we are from. But I guess I didn't look, I didn't do all the research yet. I only kind of like got 
on the tip of it. But I guess in Ohio, there was a mysterious person sending letters to people in Circleville. Like he sent letters to a woman accusing her of having an affair. Then he like called the husband and the husband showed up and he was like shot dead. Um, and it's just like, it's a like a mysterious case of like letters people were getting and they didn't know who by. And they were like ominous, creepy, accusatory, and like downright threatening. So it's a really interesting case. I think Luca knows more about it. I have not fully done the research yet. That'll be later while I'm watching Women Who Kill, episode three. Um, join us on Friday for the Circleville Letters episode. It's going to be really, really creepy. And then I'll be back on Monday after that with Michelle. And I think we're going to do another alien themed episode. Um, so. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe on everything on follow YouTube. Follow the social medias. Yes, follow the social medias. Uh, you know, reach out to us. Tell us, you know, your stories. Look out for, you know, oh, we all frozen. And we all back. Um, so uh, follow us on everything. Stay with Listen me. To- Stay with me. Oh my god, wait, I just came up with a great idea. Okay. What? No, I'm not, I'm just gonna after, send it to you. Well, we can do it after I like I'll like I'll like say the goodbyes in a second. Oh, okay. No, I'm just I'm gonna make it and then send it to you. Okay, okay. Um, so I I should start saying that. Stay with uh this is even hey, podcast. Me. Stay with us and then I'll play like a little commercial. I should actually start doing that though. Um so Follow us on everything. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube and watch out for uh, all of our bonus videos and bonus content as well as just all the other episodes that are going to come out here. And merch is uh, going to be available hopefully very soon. We are in the process of just like we said it was going to be soon a while ago, available a while ago. But then we were like, yeah, maybe we should take some more time and like kind of relook at it. So it will be available soon. But thank you, Megan, for joining us on the Evil and Eerie podcast. Yet again, we will be back on Zoom shortly. Um, And yeah, join us again on Friday. Stay with us. (laughs) Take care.